What's up, everybody? Renfail here, the Bearded Dwarven Princess. I got a kick out of today's rant video for Rings of Power because this is this goes back to the video I did a few weeks ago about the proto-hobbits and the Harfoots and these ridiculous claims that these are some sort of pre-hobbit hobbits. And then at Comic-Con, you've got the showrunners claiming that these aren't hobbits at all. They're Harfoots, and that's completely different. And <laughs> this is the funniest stuff ever. But don't don't take my word for it. We're gonna dive into today's rant. Um, we went over to uh, uh, bounding into comics. There's this hilarious article that says, despite the Lord of the Rings rings of power, including hobbits, J.R.R. Tolkien made it clear they were not in the Second Age. Now, I previously did a video on this. Uh, I'll put it up here somewhere. You can check that out at your leisure. Where I talked about the proto hobbits that they're putting in the Harfoots, because there was these claims being made that, you know, we're in, you know, hobbits, and it's like hobbits didn't exist or at least they didn't do anything noteworthy until the third age and there's a lot of different back and forths in tolkien's texts about how they didn't exist until the third age including from tolkien's letters when he was talking about the silmarillion before it was actually published and talking about how those stories the war of the three jewels didn't actually have hobbits in those stories at all now that's not proof positive that hobbits didn't exist during that time period, but it is proof positive that they weren't part of that story. And we've known that they're not part of that story, And but the showrunners have to take it upon themselves to put the hobbits into the story because they know that they're not going to be able to attract an audience about the Lord of the Rings if it doesn't have hobbits in it. It's just, this is hilarious. So... This is a beautiful thing here. Um, it said, uh, showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay attempted to explain the problem away during an appearance in Hall H at San Diego Comic-Con. During a question and answer portion, um, he was asked, why is there a Hobbit story in the Second Age? To which Payne replied, well, it's technically not a Hobbit story. It's a Harfoot story. And so Tolkien doesn't say anything about Harfoots not having done anything amazing in the Second Age. He just simply sees it as Hobbits before the Third Age didn't do anything impressive. So we felt we had license there to tell a good Harfoot story. And his fellow showrunner, Patrick McKay, then added, it was really important to us from minute one that what makes Tolkien's tone unique and special is the blend of all these cultures that what brings, what teaches them brings to middle earth and what each of them represent the underdogs and the smallest people being able to do great deeds we could not imagine a version of the show that didn't have a version of that in some form and we went deep into the text to find it and we think there's a beautiful wonderful story there that you guys are really going to love in other words you made a bunch of shit up and I love the part about how they claim that it's not a hobbit story it's a harfoot story as if harfoots aren't hobbits what are you guys smoking? Because Harfoots literally are hobbits. Literally from the Fellowship of the Ring. And I talked about this in my other video. Um, so It also talks about here. Um, he said, Tolkien gave us all these amazing clues about the cultures in the Second Age concerning hobbits. He talks about the ancestors of hobbits where there's Stewars, Fallow Hides, and Harfoots. And he gives us just a couple of tantalizing tantalizing paragraphs about Harfoots, but when you take these clues in there and you say, cool, what kind of society were they had? He talks about their wandering days. But here's the thing. Harfoots were hobbits. Tolkien made this abundantly clear in the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring where he writes on page three. And by the way, this is the part I covered in my video on these proto-hobbits. I literally talked about all this stuff. So this is your preaching to the choir here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in the Fellowship of the Ring, he writes, Before the crossing of the mountains, the hobbits had already become divided into three somewhat different breeds, Harfoots, Stewars, and Fallowhides. The Harfoots were browner of skin, smaller and shorter, and they were beardless and bootless. Their hands and neat feet were nimble and quick, and they preferred highlands and hillsides. The Harfoots had much to do with dwarves in ancient times and long lived in the foothills of the mountains. They moved westward early and roamed over Eriador as far as Weathertop while the others were still in Wilderland. They were the most normal and representative variety of hobbits and as far the most numerous. They were the most inclined to settle in one place and longest preserved their ancestral habit of living in tunnels and holes. So clearly, hobbits are indeed Harfoots clearly are indeed hobbits, despite Payne's claim to the contrary. One only need to have read the third page of the Fellowship of the Ring to have figured it out. This is brilliant stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And again, 
this is what I had already talked about in my prototype Hobbit video. So you're preaching to the choir. This is one of the reasons I'm doing my Mondays in Middle Earth read to and read through so that we can see things like this and poke fun at it. So if you haven't already done so, make sure to follow along with those. They come out every Monday at 11 a.m. Central. The Mondays in Middle Earth read through. We're going through the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings, and the Silmarillion leading up to and beyond the Rings of Power, because it won't be finished by the time the Rings of Power comes out. Also, don't forget, if you like this channel and you like what you've heard here today, to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get updates like this in the future. And of course, don't forget, you can always support the channel with the super thanks on this video. You go down to that button directly down below, and you could do, there's some pre-programmed amounts like two bucks, five bucks, but you could put anything there that you want, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, a Ferrari, you pick. Uh, you can also join as a member of the Adventurers Guild, which is two ninety nine a month down there. That's a membership option. I've got dust all over my shirt. I don't know what happened there. And of course, I live stream every morning from around 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. and every afternoon from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. ish Central Time. And when you're on a live stream, you could drop super chats and stickers to support the channel as I continue my adventures as a full-time content creator. And of course, I'm also a game developer and an author on my own. I'm working on the World of the Weave in the Void, which is a fifth edition tabletop setting, a point and click adventure game, and a book series, all done with my wife and my brother, and some of our friends like Nathan Napalm and Becca, who is Batty Code and Sparrow's daughter. You can find more information out about that over at patreon.com forward slash winding hermits, or you can go to weaveandvoid.com. Back to the video. Back to reality. Um, as far as McKay's claims that he couldn't imagine a version of the Second Age without hobbits, I love the way they wrote this. Maybe he can't, but J.R.R. Tolkien certainly could and made it clear on a number of occasions. So in the Appendix B, he reveals that hobbits didn't arrive in the stories until the Third Age, when a tribe of Harfoots entered Eriador in 1050. And the entry states that Perry and Ath are first mentioned in the records with the coming of the Harfoots to Eriador. Um, also, another example that Harfoots are indeed hobbits. I call them proto-hobbits in my video because... They are the precursor, but they are still mentioned as hobbits. They're one of the three different hobbit types or hobbit tribes, as you would have it, clearly referenced in the very beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring. And considering that these people have the rights to the Fellowship of the Ring as part of what they're building, you would think they would have read that, but instead they're choosing to just make their own version up based on some who knows what. Um, now, this is, I will give credit to the writers here at Batting in the Comments because they say that's not to say. The beginnings of the Hobbits weren't before the Third Age, because Tolkien did write in the prologue to the Fellowship of the Ring that the beginning of Hobbits lies far back in the Elder Days that are lost and forgotten. Only the Elves still preserve any records of that vanished time, and their traditions are concerned almost entirely with their own history, in which men seldom appear, and Hobbits are not mentioned at all. Tolkien also detailed that the Hobbit's own records began only after the settlement of the Shire, and their most ancient legends hardly looked further back than their wandering days. It is clear, nonetheless, that from these legends and from the evidence of their peculiar words and customs, that like many other folk, Hobbits had a distant past moved westward. Their earliest tales seem to glimpse a time when they dwelt in the upper vales of Anduin, between the eaves of Greenwood the Great and the Misty Mountains. Why they later undertook the hard and perilous crossing of the mountains into Eridor is no longer certain. Their own accounts speak of the multiplying of men in the land and of a shadow that fell on the forest and became darkened, and its new name was Mirkwood. So, yes, Tolkien does mention the hobbits going back to the elder days of the first age, but he also makes it clear, as we mentioned earlier, that they didn't play a significant role in any of the histories until the Third Age. And this is where we get into the uh, letters that he wrote. It says in letter 131 to Milton Waldman, he wrote that it's in the middle of this age the hobbits appear, their origin is unknown even to themselves, for they scraped the notice of the great or the civilized people's records, and kept none themselves save vague oral traditions, until they had migrated from the borders of Mirkwood, fleeing from shadow and wandered westward, coming into contact with the last remnants of the King of Arnor. There's a great section here in also in the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring where they detail in this in the concerning hobbits section, uh, which is the foreword to uh, the Fellowship of the Ring, where Tolkien talks more about the history of the hobbits. Then in letter 19 to Stanley Unwin, he wrote that the history of Middle-earth did not include hobbits. He says, I shall certainly now, if I'm allowed, publish the parts of the great history that was written first and rejected. This is the Silmarillion, by the way. But to, but the to be for surprising success of Lord of the Rings will probably cause that rejection to be reconsidered, though I do not think it would have the appeal of Lord of the Rings because there's no hobbits. There's mythology and elvishness and all that high style, as Chaucer might say, which has been so little to the taste of many reviewers. Then in letter 223 to Rainer Unwin, he says... I am now under contract engaged among the last of the less congenial tasks and putting into order for publication the mythology of the stories of the first and second ages written long ago but judged hardly publishable until 
so it seems, the surprising success of the Lord of the Rings, which comes at the end, but provided a probable demand of the beginnings. But there are, I fear, no hobbits in the Silmarillion or the history of the Three Jewels. A little fun or earthiness, but mostly grief and disaster. Um, what's really important here um, is that they're talking about the Silmarillion, and of course we know that they don't have the um, rights to the Silmarillion. So they only have the rights to the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, Return of the King, the Pendices, and the Hobbit. So they have to take what they have here. Now, obviously separating Harfoots from Hobbits is a contradiction, at least to those of us who are fans of Tolkien's actual work. Um, I, I, they do say that here that uh, including Hobbits in the Second Age might be an egregious, an egreg I can't pronounce that word, a contradiction. <laughs> uh, but apparently the Tolkien estate didn't think so. So that's something that has to be taken into consideration. But it is worth noting that, come on, Harfoots are Hobbits. So you can't claim that they aren't. Um, they obviously are making up their own version. And, and I think that it is safe to say, I will give them some wiggle room and say that while technically there's nothing in the second age about hobbits and that the fact that Tolkien has stated on the record that the hobbits didn't do anything of note until the third age and no one really has any records of them that doesn't necessarily mean they weren't around because as mentioned in other places they have been around since the elder days which which suggests since the first age we just don't have him detailing anywhere what was going on with the hobbits during these great periods of time so from the perspective of the showrunners they have what they consider sort of some really broad lines that they can paint between in terms of what they're allowed to do because there's wiggle room because technically hobbits could have existed in this time and we know that they kind of did we just don't know what they were up to and we do have a brief description of the harfoots so we can kind of take that brief description and expand upon that and come up with our own version of things and sort of write the novel that tokyo never wrote i get where they're going with that i don't necessarily agree or disagree what i do disagree with is the way the wording is being made to be like these aren't hobbits they're harfoots harfoots are hobbits okay proto hobbits whatever you want to call them but harfoots are hobbits there is no if ands or buts here comments below like follow subscribe see you next time and happy reading